Hello everyone. I welcome you all with another topic for today. This is NCERT Class Sixth, Chapter Ten, Motion and Measurement of Distances. This content is brought to you by Beyond Book. For more such content, you can visit our website www.beyondbook.org. You can even subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you are enjoying our content, please comment down below. It is a great motivation for us too. Okay, let's quickly jump into the content and see what all things we are going to learn. So we'll be talking about the story of transport. See, we'll be talking about the measurements. We'll see some standard units of measurements. Okay, we'll see how to correctly measure the length. Okay, we'll be seeing moving thing around us, and we'll be talking about the types of motion. So these are the major parts that we will be covering as we move along. Okay, let's quickly jump into the first thing. Story of transport. Now, if you see, long ago people did not have any like means of transport. What they used to do? They used to move only on their foot. They used to carry their goods on their back. Later, the animals came in and they were used as a means of transport, right? And after some time, what happened? People learned to put together different pieces of wood into some shapes. These shapes were what? Like boats, right? And they used these boats to move or transport goods around later came in the invention of wheel which like changed the mode of transport completely because of that only the automobiles ke like sector came in which is like we are able to see today right so the motor cars trucks buses motorized boats ships they were all the means of transport which came in after the invention of wheel and even after the like, invention of very simple transport that the animal transport was right so all of these things happen gradually over the years now if you see okay this is something that we have how wide is this disc so what does it actually mean like is it, it what do you think is it important to know uh, let's say that i'm going to a particular park is it important to know how far is that park it is right so if we are going to some place, we need to have an idea like how we are going to reach that place, how much we have to walk, like uh, either I have to take a bus or I have to take a train or an aeroplane, yeah, even a spacecraft, right? So it is important to know how far is that particular place. So there are many occasions we need, like, came across in our daily life, like we need the use of length and distance, right? We need to measure it. For example, if you go to a tailor, he need to measure the length of the clothes, right? So that he can, like, he have enough suit or the cloth to stitch a kurta. Even if you go to a carpenter, he need to measure the height and the width of a cupboard so that he is able to make that uh, cupboard or a door for you, right? And there is one more example we have over here that is the farmer. If a farmer needs, like, the farmer needs to know the length of length and breadth of the area of his land so that he knows like how much he need like how much seeds like, he can sow or how much crop he can grow in that particular area so if you see these are all the daily life examples that we have and we in all of these we need to measure things we need to measure length and the distances so now we have an activity for you all let's quickly try this activity i want you to like work in groups for this activity and using the your hand span, you need to measure the length of your table. Like whatever table you are sitting on right now, yes, try to measure the length of that whole table with the help of your uh, hand span, just like this. You can see the picture below. And yes, okay. So with the help of your hand span, even you can measure the things, right? Okay. Now, okay. Let's see. Now we have some measurements over here. So in the previous activity, we saw that we are measuring, we are comparing like unknown quantities. So it doesn't like happen that every single child will have the same measurement of their table, right? It might be that Aryan have a different measurement and Rohan have a different measurement. So we cannot say that the, they will be same. Okay. So we are comparing unknown quantities with some known quantities. Okay. What does it mean? This known fixed quantity that we have is the unit. Okay. I hope you understand like what is unit. Right. Now, if you see the result of measurement is expressed in two parts. One part is the number part and the other part is the unit. For example, if I say 12 meters or my school is uh, 3 kilometers from my house. 
so 3 is the number and the kilometer is what kilometer is the unit so there is a unknown quantity yeah which can change and there is a known quantity i hope this particular thing is clear okay so now we have some standard unit of measurements so there are some standard units right uh, so si units they are called as right and these are the like these are famous scientists all over the world that have accepted this like these are the standard units of measurement and we follow these standard units only okay the short form of these are stand si units okay now meter is a si unit of what you must have heard this term meter right meter is a unit it is a si unit of length and each meter is divided into 100 equal divisions okay for example if this is a straight line right something like this this straight line is divided into 100 small divisions okay and each division equals to what one centimeter so for one meter if we divide them into 100 equal divisions they become what centimeter okay i hope this particular thing is clear and if you try to divide one centimeter imagine another small line even smaller than this equal to one division of this okay so if you make like 10 small divisions in this one centimeter not 100 10 small divisions it will become what 10 millimeter okay i hope this particular thing is clear so if you see over here one meter equals to 100 centimeter one centimeter equals to 10 millimeter right and we have bigger unit of measurement too right for measuring larger distances meter is not a convenient unit okay so we have what we have kilometer so one kilometer equals to 1000 meters okay i hope these are the standard si units like uh, units of measurement i hope these are all clear moving on to the next thing which is correct measurement of length now if you see in a daily life we have different measuring devices right for example a tailor uses a tape whereas a, a cloth merchant uses a meter rod right so for different like different materials or different things different varieties we have different measuring devices right now in order to take measurement of like uh, any object for example if you have a measuring scale right a, a meter scale right so you want to measure this box if you can see let me just quickly mark it over here yeah this box if you want to measure this how will you do it you need to place the scale in contact with the object along its length okay just like shown in this picture over here figure 10.7 you can see okay and after that what you need to do there is one very important thing you need to like uh, be careful right that the scale that you are using it should not be broken right it may be that you are not able to see the zero mark on that scale uh, in such case you should avoid taking the measurement from the zero mark of the scale right what you can do instead of this like you can uh, use any other full mark of the scale but you need to subtract that the reading of this mark right for example like in this figure 10.8 b this okay, let me quickly mark it over here okay this one you can clearly see that the reading ends from like we are starting from the one centimeter right and it is ending at 14 right so 14.3 to be exact right so we need to subtract one from 14.3 so that we get that accurate result right because we are measuring we are starting from the one not from the zero okay i hope this particular thing is clear right and if you are enjoying this content please comment down below moving on okay so correct measurement of length now if you see the correct position to like observe the observations that you are making for example if you are measuring uh, the length of a table right if you're measuring like this boy if you're seeing the measurement like this it might be that you are looking at the wrong measurement similar for the boy c you should always look look from top position right just like the boy b just like the boy b this is the correct 
proper position of the eye for taking reading from a scale okay i hope this thing is clear to everyone right moving on to the next thing now measuring the length of a curved line okay we cannot measure a curved line directly so what you can do actually is you can use a thread to measure the curved line with the help of a thread you can actually place the thread over the line and finally you can uh, like straighten up the thread and measure it on a scale right this is a very efficient way to measure a curved line okay moving on to the next thing now moving things around us right what is motion is a kind of change in the position of an object with time very simple thing right so if we are like for example if i am on a train right and someone from outside is seeing me for him i am in motion right yes yes or no it is right so it is kind of a change in position right for that person outside i am changing my position right okay so i hope this thing is clear now types of motion okay let's talk about types of motion the first that we have over here is rectilinear motion now what is rectilinear very simple motion in straight line is called rectilinear motion for example if you see like a cyclist running on a straight road or you are jogging on a straight uh, like park right moving on to the next thing okay circular motion so we talked about rectilinear motion now the second one is the circular motion so when you are when an object moves along a circular path it is called a circular motion okay so for example movement of an artificial satellite around the earth is also a circular movement right a circular motion and the next that we have types of motion is periodic motion what is periodic means the motion which repeats itself after a regular interval of time that is known as periodic motion okay for example if you see the this picture over here you can see there is a pendulum and this pendulum is uh, moving and like it, like if after regular intervals of time this pendulum is revolving right like swinging around okay so between position a and position c it is moving right and the middle part is the like position b is the middle right so the swinging pendulum is what it is a periodic motion i hope this particular thing is clear as well moving on rotational motion so this is the final type of motion that we have which is the rotational motion so see when an object is fixed on an axis okay and it is turning on that fixed axis that is known as what rotational motion okay for example if you see this earth over here there is a north pole and there is a south pole right so these are what the earth is moving along this axis and naturally right another example if you see the wheels of a car move in a rotational motion right okay the earth rotating is on its axis is also a rotational motion so i hope this is clear and i hope you learned something new today right and if you're liking our content please comment down below and share it with your loved ones so that's it for this particular topic i hope you learn something new thank you and have a nice day bye bye